Make some noise for our guests from Harry Potter. Give it up for Rupert Grint and Jason. So I'm sorry for anyone who had a very strange conversation with me. Because I'm not insane, kind of, but uh, I can just hear my own voice echoed. But, I mean, but, but people seem lovely on the other side of the plastic. <laughs> we, we are happy to have both of you here, and as you can see, we already have like a long queue of people um, wanting to get their questions in, so let's just dive right into it and uh, invite the first guest to... Uh... Hello. Hi. 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 Um, my question is, who is the best Harry Potter character expect, uh, except for your own, of course? Well, I've got two daughters, and I always thought Hermione was by far and away the smartest, bravest, uh, most extraordinary character in it. But, I know who's going to be listening to this is Tom, and I think that Draco is the hero of the whole story, because he was brought up with a really oh, shitty dad, and still did the right thing at the end. Oh, yes. he the best. Um, I've always had a soft spot for Hagrid. Um, um, yeah, there's just something so kind of lovable and kind of paternal about him. Um, I think that's something I'm kind of resonating with at the moment because I've just had a kid uh, Wednesday who's here today. Um, so yeah, no, I've, I've always kind of, uh, I've always liked Hagrid. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks so much. Hi. 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 So, um, yeah. yeah. So my question is: Is there any director you would love to shoot a movie with, and what movie would you love to be a part of? We kind of talked about it yesterday. So any director you would love to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Um, Millions, but uh, mostly I wasn't in number three. Uh, luckily, I went off and made Peter Pan during that year. I didn't get too jealous. But Alfonso Cuarón is one of the greatest directors in the world, and I didn't get the privilege of that. You did. I did, yeah. He was great. You missed him. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, I think um, I don't know. I've actually I've, been, I've worked recently with M Night Shyamalan. Actually, he was going to do that. Movie. Yeah, he was. That would have been two great directors on this album. But yeah, I mean, there's so many. Um, I think Tarantino would be fun. Oh yeah. Yes. Um, like that, that just sprung to mind. But um, I, yeah, like if he's listening. <laughs> yeah. Well, Martin Scorsese, if he comes to these conventions, <laughs> Marty, if you're out there, would like it. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I want to ask you about, um, have you got any favorite lines from all the movies that your character says? And can you say it in the intonation of your character? Well, let's go okay. to favorite lines first. Yeah, that seems to be a thing here, I've noticed. I've signed a lot of things with like a, a quote. Um, I don't know, I think bloody hell was always something that I... That <laughs> when I was young, I always thought having a catchphrase was like the absolute pinnacle of anything. And that was the closest I ever really got to a catchphrase. So, yeah. Tom gets my father. He's always asked, has your father heard about it? They're always like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you can't do your voice anymore because you were 12, and now uh, you're, you're, you're <laughs> yeah, 16, yeah. or you're something like 16. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Six, yeah, 62. Um, yeah. My, my favorite line was actually Daniel's. So in my first day on the set, I was shooting the last bit of Chamber of Secrets, and I improvised a line. And so uh, I was meant to just leave the room when Dumbledore said, Thank you, Lucy, that'll be all. And I, I, was, I had no lines, and I said to Chris Columbus, Can I say something? He said, Like what? I said, I don't know. Just I feel like Lucy is so proud. He'd say something. 
So he said, well, just try it. And I didn't tell Daniel, who was 12. You know, and I said, let's hope Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. And Daniel puffed his little chest out and he went, don't worry, I will be. <laughs> and I thought, he's not meant to be this good. <laughs> uh, it was his line I liked. Thanks so much for your Thank question. You. Thank you. Hello, um, nice to meet you. Hi. You didn't, sorry, there's 3,000 other people in this meeting. Wenn noch ein Autogramm von Paul Westway möchte. So, a brief announcement like this. Oh, right. Weil er nicht mehr so lange da ist. Ach, 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 ach. Ich bin für uns für alle Gäste. Wenn ihr noch irgendwie Autogramm-Tickets habt. Was soll ich sagen? Jetzt einlösen. Ach, cool. Sorry, keys start over. <laughs> okay, um, if you could choose any job in the wizarding world, which one would it be? Wow, if you could just introduce a trainer, he's a kid. Yeah. Like um, horror, headmaster, teacher. <laughs> I mean, Lucy Smalfoy is just rich. He didn't need a job. <laughs> he was just a rich racist. <laughs> he enjoyed himself in his house until he got his wand snapped, which was very painful. Uh, so, no, I, I, as, as him, I didn't want a job at all. In fact, my first day, not at work, a few weeks before I started, they showed me a suit, just a plain suit and drawings of him looking like this, and I said, well, I, I quite like a wig. And they went, a wig? Dumbledore's got a wig. I went, it's not a one-wig film, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's Harry Potter. And they said, but, uh, and I said, what's the suit for? And they said, well, he's a businessman. I went, no, no, he's rich. He doesn't work at all, so I don't want a job. I want to stay rich. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Who would I don't know. I think maybe drive the train. That'd be quite good. <laughs> what a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <was>, yeah, <laughs> real. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Hey. My name is Ashraf, and I Hi. have a question to you, Ron. Yes. Um, His name's Rupert, just so you know. <laughs> there is a difference. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, specific to uh, the Harry Potter universe. Yes. Uh, how, did you, uh, how did you film the Eat Slugs uh, scene? Yeah, no, I do, I do. I remember that scene very well. It really sticks in your mind. Um, so, yeah, yeah I, I just filled my mouth with, like, latex, oh. silicon slugs. Yeah. Um, Sorry, that's worse than slugs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they did flavour the slime, which was nice, I appreciated that. I had like orange flavoured slime, that was like another citrusy one. Um, yeah, so it, it, but yeah, literally I just, I just spat them out. Yo, thanks. It was great, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just wanted to say I really love the films and I love all of you guys and I especially like Alan Rickman So I just wanted to ask if you could share some of your favorite moments with him on set Yeah, he was, he was great. I mean, you... Yeah, we've lost uh, quite a few of the cast. I mean, though it was a huge cast and it's been many decades and people get old uh, He was a great loss. He was a wonderful actor. But the thing about Alan, he was... Uh, until you spoke to him, he was very intimidating. So he'd been in so many films, playing intimidating characters, Snape was pretty intimidating. And then when you spoke to him, he really wasn't at all. You know, it was very funny, very dry. Yeah, I yeah, got some he was, he was He took such an interest in all of us, I always remember. He always was kind of asking about what we're going to do next, you're going to do theatre, and he was, he, he was just, yeah, he, he, you could just tell that he really cared. And he had a great sense of humour, he was, yeah, despite, as Jason says, he was quite, I mean, I think he stayed in character quite a lot of the time. Yeah. Which was quite a scary character, um, but yeah, he was, he was so fun, um, and yeah, he's, he's a, I do miss him a lot. Thanks so much. Hi, hi, uh, hi Rupert. Hi, uh, Jason. My first question gets on Rupert. Um, how was the feeling when you came back to Hogwarts uh, for the reunion? Do you miss the time? And my girlfriend is a giant Harry Potter fan, uh, but she cannot hear. Today, um, can you say hello well, to her? Well, she's really not that big a fan if she's not here, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are, you are, you are. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. I'm also <laughs> Can you say hello to her, my cameraman, Timoris? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's her name? Timo. And my, her, her and my girlfriend her is uh, John. <laughs> that's convenient, because that's your name as well, so that must be uh, confusing sometimes. <laughs> 
Uh, my name is Mike, and my girlfriend uh, is Josie. Her name? Josie. Hi, Josie. Josie. Hi, Josie. How you doing? Hi, hey, Josie. <laughs> Good morning, Prosper. Yeah. <laughs> To after so many years to go back to that reunion and, and be there as well, you know, with the others. Yeah, it was actually kind of surprisingly more moving than I actually thought it would be. Um, it was, uh, I forget, it's just been such a long time. It's been 10 years uh, since we finished the last movie, and um, yeah, just to see everyone it's again. Long. It's long. Was it 2008? 14 years, I think. Well, 13 was last year, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think this, I've always said... You missed a few. You missed, missed a few. Yeah. Missed back up. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, that, that's crazy. Um, so, yeah, no, it was, yeah, it kind of brings it all back, and it was such a great... It was such an intense time, but it was such a, a great time, and it was, yeah, so nice to see everyone. It really was this... It's, a, it's like a second family, really. Um, so, to, to, to see everyone in one place was, yeah... Really special. Well, you grew up then. The thing I think people often don't understand is, for us adults, we went into work, we came home. For me and many other adults, we do two weeks in February and uh, you know the month of May and a week in October. Ruben, Daniel, Emma, Tom, a lot of the others, Matthew were there all the time. And when they weren't there, lots of them, a few did. They went to school there as well. They built a school, yeah, so that was school. their school. Those were their classmates. So it really was your life. It was, was, yeah. We, I, I, I didn't really have a life outside of it. <laughs> That was kind of kind of it, um, and it was it was great. It was a great place to be, and we really well looked after. One of those was it a good school? It was a great school. Yeah, I, actually, I think I did better there than I would have done in regular school because it was this kind of one-to-one -one educa education. It was it was, it was great for me. Um, so yeah, but it, it was yeah, it was that was everything. So it was uh, yeah, a nice moment. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My second question. Oh yeah, another question. Hello. Uh, how hard is it for you uh, to be on a stage with a Weasley? <laughs> well, actually, funny enough, I was going to ask uh, if I got to. I wanted to ask Rupert a question because he played Ron brilliantly, uh, and Ron in the films, not in the books, is is kind of the object of fun a lot. And a little bit, not stupid, but kind of the simpleton. Yeah, yeah. And, and well, no, that's not, I'm not being rude. That's, that's what the creative. It's not really on the page. It's in the film. And did you find? Do you find when you meet people and when the work you're going on for that that hangs over you? That notion that you're a bit simple or a bit silly or something. Um. Yeah, I think there's an element of that. <laughs> but there's there's an element of that in my own personality as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that is something. I mean, I think over the years, I. Me and Ron kind of merged into the same person. It was, I found it quite hard to differentiate who was who. <laughs> well, you need to go to therapy, excuse me, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Really, you know. On the couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. Thanks so Thank much. You. Thank Thanks. you. Hi. 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 My name is Veronica. I'm from Ukraine. Um, my question for both, both of you. Uh, has it happening on set when you shoot a serious scene and couldn't stop laughing? What happened? Oh, okay, yeah, that happened a lot. <laughs> the worst was Dumbledore's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Some reason, well, obviously, I was not laughing at that. Um, but it, it, I think it's the, it's the serious scenes where you, when you know you, when you can't laugh, it's you want to laugh, yeah. and that was yeah, I was. I found it quite hard to control myself. Yeah. I mean, acting is not a very serious job. It's a very serious thing to watch sometimes. The whole time, we're really just children playing in a sandpit. So you're laughing all the time. The thing that's nice about Harry Potter, I've done a lot of independent films, Rupert's done some as well. Time is very short there. You really have to hurry up and you're going to lose the location. In Harry Potter, you could just last for weeks. It really doesn't matter. You can just keep laughing. Um, yeah, I found it. I, I, I'm old. I knew lots of the other actors. We worked in many other contexts. I didn't think I would work with my great hero, Gary Oldman, or my Rafe, who I worked with lots of times, to, <laughs> waving wands at each other in a big cape. You know, so uh, it was very hard to take. And Helen McCrory, who was a friend of mine, the late, great, brilliant Helen McCrory, was one of the funniest people you could ever hope to meet. She would whisper things in my ear that would make it very, very hard not to start crying with laughter. So yeah, I don't think any of us took it very seriously. I'm sorry. And I can imagine, like for the uh, for like the first two movies with the directors, when you're directing tens or even hundreds of kids at the same time, like might be very time-consuming to uh, actually get a scene out. Right? 
Yeah, it's the kids and it's all the animals as well. There's just so many animals. Oh my <laughs> God, they're Jimmy. This is, might be bad taste. Robbie's dog. Robbie's dog. Uh, Robbie had different dogs uh, because they had a dog when Robbie was Hagrid and then when the yeah. very, very large Martin was playing Hagrid, they had a much bigger dog. But all of those dogs had terrible digestion problems. <laughs> And when those dogs let rip, you had to leave the hut for half an hour. Oh, you know, such a small space. Be in the middle of the scene and go, I'm going to be sick. I have a leave. Thanks so much for your question. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, thank you so much for coming. Um, I wanted to ask two questions. I'll ask them both directly because I think many people want to ask questions as well. And first of all, uh, Rupert, you already, already mentioned uh, that your wife, Georgia, and your kid is with you. And how does Wednesday deal with uh, like these social events? And my second question is, uh, do you guys have a um, favorite place at Hogwarts? Like, for example, Hagrid's Hut or something else? Nice, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, what was the word? Uh, so that you bring uh, Wednesday. How does Wednesday deal yeah, with we were just uh, social about events? This. <laughs> yeah, this is our first. <laughs> this is her first exp uh, kind of exposure to all this, and it's, she loves it. She loves Halloween, and she loves seeing everyone kind of dressed up. And she doesn't really, she has no real sense of who I am or what I do or anything. But um, she's just very excited to see. There was a lion, I think, and like Elsa walking around, and she was yeah, very excited. But it's great. It's fun to bring her to these things and kind of dip her toe into this this world. It's yeah, it's exciting for me. And your second question was, what is your favorite set uh, in... Yes, like favorite scenery, favorite set, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, the amazing thing about Harry Potter is, when you work on most movies, uh, they plan very carefully where the shots are, the director sits with the camera person, they go, film that bit, so they just build that wall, and that bit of that ceiling. But because they were making lots of books into lots of films, they built the whole thing. So I remember walking in one day and going, oh, there's a scene set in the Ministry of Magic. Holy shit! They built the Ministry of Magic. Do you know what I mean? They built the whole thing every time. It was, they weren't green screen. The only room I remember being green screen is the one with all the prophecies because they had to fall over. But every other set was like nothing I've ever seen before or since. So they were, they were all... My favorite, I guess, is my first set I walked in was Dumbledore's office because it just, even in the drawers and in the books and in the cupboards, there were, the detail they'd gone to well, was... It, I was so stupid and so... Amazed by it, I went, what's, oh my god, that's a, what's that bird? They said, it's a phoenix. And I said, where do they come from? And they went, it's a phoenix. And I went, yeah, from what country? And they went, from the robot department. And I went, oh, sorry. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Remember your first uh, memory on set and um, as your characters? <laughs> yeah, actually, my first scene was I think the last scene in the movie. It was already did you come to Goatland? Oh. It's where the um, where we the, yeah uh, at the train station at Hogsmeade. I would say goodbye to Hagrid, and that was the last. That was the first scene we we show. And it was yeah, it was incredible because I was a huge fan of the books, um, and to suddenly kind of everything was real, it kind of blew my mind. Um, so it was a very overwhelming period for me. Um, did you even, did you imagine at that age that you would be making many films? Do you think there'd be more than one? No, I think we knew there was going to be two from the beginning, but I think only three had been written. Yeah. So it was all very kind of new and we were just, I was just going with the flow really, and yeah. seeing where, <laughs> where it ends up. And, um, it was just, yeah, it was just a dream come true. <laughs> my, my first day, my first real day was the last scene of number two in Dumbledore's office. But my first day was with what's called second unit. So the main film unit is main unit. Second unit, they do the extra bits of people sitting on a broom or getting in a car. The main director's not there. So second unit, I was sitting in the stands watching a game of Quidditch. And a guy came on, Jamie then, and said, he had a stick with a tennis ball. He went, right, here we go, it's a blodger, there's a blodger, here we go, there's a snitch, and uh, along comes a beater, and then, uh, and now, and Harry's got the snitch. And I went, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I said to Alan, Rick Moose, I said, 
what does that mean? Like, is that good, bad? He went, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Am I happy or sad about it? He goes, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> so I just pop it in. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks. 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 I have a question for the both of you. Uh, I was wondering if the two of you think personally that the movies done a gun have done a great job adopting um, the book characters, like the depth and the essence of the characters. Like how that worked into the film? Yeah. Okay. No, I think it was a disaster. That's why there was such a catastrophe at the box office. No, I do. I think, actually, I think what was amazing is to take books that were that popular, that beloved. People know every punctuation mark, every word, and to do what they did, which is make two hour films, which is lose most of the book, concentrate just on Rupert, Dan, and Emma, their story, and still have all the fans of the books love them is a remarkable thing. It very rarely happens. So yeah, I, I know, yeah, that's amazing. It, I mean, it's, yeah, as you say, it's impossible to get everything in um, in just two hour movies. I think a few times they were talking about making a few of them two-parters. You were getting old too quickly. No, we were growing too much. Yeah, puberty. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, quite intense. But um, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, they did. I think all in all it was... You know what, I, I think also Joe did something very clever. She went, you know what? Films are different from books. Take them. Do what you need to do with them. Yeah. And, and there was freedom on the set to improvise, to make things up, even yeah. though the books were like the Bible for some people. We made, you know, the end of the book, the end of the seventh book, there's, the cl climax of the whole thing is really about the provenance of the wand. There's like 20 pages of where, you know, who owns the wand. And the movie makers, they went, that's not a movie. So they did something else, because film requires different story from, from uh, literature. And I thought they did it brilliantly. And I mean, to, to even uh, uh, think of, not all the books were written, like you said, when, when you were shooting, uh, but to have those elements already incorporated without knowing is brilliantly done by, uh, by the filmmakers, definitely. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for your question. Thanks. Hello. 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 Represent. Hi, I'm Pia and... First, I want to say thank you for coming to Germany. We are all happy. And now my question for you, how was the last day um, you have failed on the set, the last day? Sorry, my English is not so good. Oh, no, it's yeah. perfect. Okay. Yeah. You should hear our German. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, that's a wrap. One final time, that moment. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was just very emotional. Uh, were you were there on the lot? Uh, I, look, I, I, I'm an adult. Like I was already grown up. I'd done many other jobs before. Even during making, I did five other films and TV series. So for me, it, it was honestly just another day on the set. For me, Harry Potter was is the gift that kept giving afterwards. Most films I forget when I finish and move on to the next one. This is the only job I've ever done where most of the pleasure has come years later from seeing the effect on people and how much it means to them. But for me, it was just another day. It was very different for you, I think. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was just, it, seemed, it, it felt like it was, my whole life came down to just this last scene. So it, was, it felt like a very profound moment. I, I, I don't think I fully appreciated it at the time, but it's not since that I, I kind of look back at it and think, well, I was... Just also, they weren't over. Because when you rap, you still have to go do the voice, the maybe right. reshoots, there's publicity and whatever. Yeah, so it never yeah. felt like it was over. It's still not over. Look at but, this. but we had a mariachi band, and like, <laughs> I brought in my ice cream, and um, so it was, yeah, it, 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 in, in some ways it did kind of feel like what this final. And it was also the, the uncertainty of what was after this. I had no idea that, I didn't, I didn't know what was around the corner. I had nothing kind of looked to it. It was, it was just a very kind of, it was bittersweet, but it was kind of quite overwhelming. It, it, it was, there was a lot of things going on. Um, but it was, and it also it felt it was the right time to finish. I think we all knew that we were ready to stop. But it was, yeah, I, I think about it quite a lot, actually. Thanks so Thank much you. for your question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Hi. Hi, uh, okay. my name is Aileen, and well, I'm quite interested in acting, so I would like to know how do you prepare for a role after you booked it, and do you have any specific acting um, techniques that you use? Oh my Sorry. god. Uh, <laughs> no, the only best preparation is to be lucky enough to be offered a really well-written part. You're as good as the part. 
So uh, you can't make uh, crappy writing into something believable. And if you're lucky enough to be in these films we're talking about here, you're dealing with three-dimensional characters in amazing stories. And they kind of tell themselves. You get out of the way of the storyteller. You know, she knew what she was doing, and uh, we were cast right. And so, I mean, it's a terrible thing to say, but yeah, mostly the preparation is be cast right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, uh, yeah, that's bang on. Uh, but also, I, I, I found that it's been quite useful. It's actually since this run, it's like kind of a workout, like a walk, like a different walk, and it makes me feel like I'm. I mean, because Ron kind of, as I say, kind of merged into me, so I find having a kind of tool that brings you out of that. And it doesn't have to be like a Monty Python kind of thing, but it's like just something kind of slightly different. It just the physicality of that kind of puts you into a new kind of... I always find a voice. Actually, I've asked everyone who came to see us here today, uh, over the weekend, did you watch the film in English or German? Uh, and yeah. Because it's Germany, most people watch the film in German. And for me, at least as a British characters, reveal so much of who they are by their voice. Yeah. Not just geographically, but class-wise and pretension-wise, yeah. everything. So for me, it starts with the voice, but it, it, it's different for everyone. This is the walk, you know. I actually met my German voice. He was here, yeah. 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 It's really because he, he does all the other things I've done outside of pottery. Yeah, yeah. No, you get the same way. I, so I have the same way in France. He's done my voice for 40 years. He gets very upset when I don't work. <laughs> But, uh, I it's think kind of a responsibility, isn't it? You yeah. kind of have a mouth to feed. Thanks so much for your question. I, I got a very quick second one, if that's all right, um, to Rupert, because I think he probably has a bit more experience in that, because I have a little bit of a problem, and I think a lot of other Slytherins, Gryffindors, and so on have that too, because when I sit down with my rope and I want to get up, I always step on it. You have a trick not to do that, because I very much like not to rip them. Don't get up. <laughs> It's simple. Uh, oh, <laughs> I, don't, I can't really relate to that because Ron had hand me down ropes and they all came up to my chin. So Shorter ropes? Uh, so yeah, we short, yeah, have them hemmed up. <laughs> I'll try. Okay, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Um, from the Harry Potter movies. Hey, just repeat it one more time in the microphone. Yes, uh, my question is, do you still have uh, contact with other actors in private from the Harry Potter movies? Do you keep in touch with each other? Are you, do you have the time to? I, I keep in touch with Tom. Most of my scenes with Tom, I love him. Uh, yeah, with Tom. Don't get him a chat, he didn't. Uh, he didn't turn up. Exactly. I turned up. Exactly. <laughs> but I do love him. So. Yeah, yeah. I would say Tom. Tom. I think Tom is this kind of. He's a real kind of glue guy. He kind of. He, he's a, a real social. Um, but yeah, I, I speak to Tom quite a bit. He lives quite near me, and obviously James Oliver. I see quite a bit. Um, I speak to them, and and well, occasionally I'll meet. I'll kind of cross paths with the others, and it's and it's always lovely to to see them. It's, I mean, the older ones, we see each other all the time because we're acting and things. And, you know, remember, we were all 40, 30, 40, 50 when we did the show, but uh, so it would be strange if I was spending with people who were 12 when I met them. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Hey. So my question is, if you could choose any spell that was ever performed in Harry Potter, which would you like to use in real life if that would work? Wow. Yeah. If you um, don't know the spell, you can describe. <laughs> well, that's the same list, isn't it? Um, they're all quite aggressive, though. Yeah. A lot of them kind of... Uh, I mean, with Guardian Leviosa. <laughs> I don't really think, I don't know if that's a very useful spell, it just makes things fly. I was never very good at remembering the spells, I didn't get to do any. And since I didn't know any, on my second day, I was meant to pull out a wand and try and attack Dobby, and I didn't know any. So I said to the grip, that's why I go, mate, I don't know any spells, do any spells? He goes, no. He said, anyone, does anyone know any spells? So I went, yeah, I think I'm the Darth or something like that. I said, what? The Darth or something like that? So I pulled my arm. I went, a father can, and then I got hit off my feet. Millions of people wrote to me, how dare you, we're gonna kill Harry Potter and the Goat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any spells, I never got to use any 
Sorry. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. So while she's setting up her question, I'm just going to give a pro tip here. My nine-year-old daughter told me that if you have Siri on your phone, you can actually use the spell Lumos and Knox to turn the light on and off. <laughs> Lumos. Lumos. Oh, you need to update your phone. <laughs> You should be. There's a lot of pressure. This better be really good. Yeah. Uh, so my question is for Rupert. In the first movie, there is a scene where Harry has to, to dive into the sea to save a person he loves. Now, if Ron uh, would have been a champion, who would he save in the sea if he had to choose between Draco Malfoy and Victor Crumb? <laughs> Tough call. That is a tough one, yeah. I think... Victor Crumb. <laughs> Don't do involve me in your... Yeah, I mean, he supported your ethical minefield. I'm not involved. <laughs> yeah, he, he supported Victor Crumb's Quidditch team. Uh, uh, Siri, in film one, you brought that Yeah, that would be my, that would be my guess. What do you think? Was at its peak and like hype. Pretty good. <laughs> um, I loved it. I had uh, it was just an absolute dream um, of working with people I loved. It was a story that I loved, a character that I really enjoyed playing. And it was something was obviously it was long hours and it was it had challenges as well. There was a sacrifice definitely. Um, I didn't see a lot of my friends all the time. But yeah, all in all, I, I absolutely loved it. It was just just amazing from, uh, from my point of view. So I, I'm an adult. I've been in lots of things before and after, and I didn't experience what, what you did and the others did. But I think one of the reasons why uh, you, Tom, who are, who are better, maybe down there, have turned out to be pretty lovely people and balanced is because whilst you were maybe the most famous young people in the world, you were actually working all the time. Right, yeah. So you didn't get to travel around and be famous, you were actually working actors on a set yeah. where people didn't treat you like you were gods, they were treated like the other actors in the scene. Yeah. And if you had spent your teen years in Hollywood, or I've seen some teens really, things go badly wrong, uh, it would be a different story, but you were, you were in this family with their arms around you, I think. Yeah, in some ways. yeah I think that's completely right. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks. Oh, you say, Brooke, have you any idea how big this room is? I can't tell if it's 300 it's people or 10,000 people. It's Miss McKinley. Like, how far back does, is it? Like 10 miles of people? I don't know. We can't see anything up here. Sorry. If it's just us, then you've front. There's like 10 people in here with a speaker. Hi. Um, first of all, sorry for my English. I'm oh, nervous. No. But I wanted to ask uh, what's your favorite class in Hogwarts? What is your favorite? favorite? Class in Hogwarts. Class in Hogwarts. Oh, okay. Favorite subject. Oh, um, class. <laughs> I, like, I don't like my favorite class of human being as Lucy. <laughs> Lucy is really, I, I think, interesting. You know, the reason the stories work and resonate is they're fabulous and entertaining, but they parallel everything in the modern world. And Lucius was a blonde, rich, racist <laughs> trying to make Hogwarts great again. And, uh, <laughs> Modern parallels uh, of that kind of behavior. So, uh, yeah, that's my favorite class of human being. <laughs> I liked, and it's a class that we didn't really do very often. I think we only did it, we only see it like, once in the series. Um, Transfiguration yeah. with uh, Professor McGonagall. So he always has like some crazy animals. I always remember this baboon. 
I was doing terrible things in the corner. Um, but yeah, that was that was a that digital was, baboon, or did you have a baboon? Digital What's baboon. That? Digital baboon, or did no? It was a real baboon. Yeah, baboon. In those days, yeah, we used real baboons. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Thank you. Right now, um, first I want to thank you for coming to this Comic Con because I'm a huge Pod fan and it really means so much to me. And I want to ask you, um, yeah, if you can choose um, anything from the Dr. Hellers, um, like which one would you choose? Which one would be your favorite? Any, any what, sir? From the um, Becky Hallows, like from the um, the cloak, the wand, oh. or the stone, which one would you choose? From the three oh, of them. Oh, okay. I was rather jealous. I, the only scene I remember that we definitely did together was in Hagrid's hut when you and Dan were inside the invisibility cloak. Yeah. <laughs> but you weren't. I could see you. <laughs> but it did make me think how much I'd like an invisibility cloak. Yeah. What do we use for the? It was like a like a veil, wasn't so. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they also just stood there. <laughs> <laughs> just stood there. Yeah. That's true. Um, well, I've taken the cloak. You've got the other two. The sword and stone. Okay. Um, Maybe the stone. Oh, uh, the sword. The sword. Here's the sword. Oh, oh the sword. yeah, the sword oh, was the a wand. Uh, yeah, the wand. Yeah. wand I think. Elder one, right? I think yeah, the wand, elder one. The elder one is a cool, is a cool wand. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, before we move on, we've, we've got like three or four minutes left before the panel ends, so let's do a quick rapid fire. Ask your question and uh, we'll see if we can get this uh, You're hiding right. behind your phone, we can't see your face. Yeah. Uh, hi. You go. <laughs> hi. What's your question? Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, my question is, what was the most difficult scene for you to shoot? It's a difficult scene to shoot. None. I, I, I loved it. I think the only the last big battle in the courtyard. Oh, yeah. It rained every day, and so we just waited because it was Warner Brothers that had enough money. We just waited to shoot. We waited in a tent. All the actors were hanging out in a big tent, drinking tea, eating biscuits, listening to Julie Walters tell stories about her pig farm. And it was very difficult to shoot the scene because I was praying for more rain. <laughs> um, Quidditch. I found Quidditch quite difficult. Physically, it was kind of. It's quite painful, and, uh, and yet you still had a daughter. I still had a daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very surprising um, after that. Um, but it, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, quite, um, quite a challenge, and to kind of focus while you're while you're in that position, it's quite quite hard. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, what's your question? Um, hi, so I would love to know if you still watch the movies from time to time and what goes on inside your head when you see yourself on the screen knowing that these movies mean so much to so, so many of us. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch things with me in it because I just go, ah, oh, no. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same, really. I, I can't really, I can't really enjoy them. I think up to, the, I've, I've seen the first three and actually recently I've been showing Wednesday a few clips. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I haven't really kind of looked back. It's I need a bit more time, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I'm so proud to be a part of them, and it's, it's great that there's so still so much enthusiasm for them, and they're finding new forms yeah. of life, and it's it's great. I, I, I'm very proud. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great now. Now you make me feel like I didn't. Say, I'm not proud. I just don't like watching myself. I think you're all amazing. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, what was your favorite scene to shoot? Favorite scene to shoot? Scene. Mine's easy. My first day, because the first day is the first time in the magic world. I did it, ran it through, I walked out the door from Dublin's office and, and Chris Columbus goes, Hi uh, Jason, maybe you want the way out, you want to shut the door? And I said, sure, can I, well, can, can I just wave my hand and it shuts by magic? And he went, yeah, sure. And I thought, this is going to be great. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the first day was pretty amazing. Um, but I think the fly, I like being in the, the flying car was fun, when we were stuck in the tree. Yeah. It was, um, we, we shot that for a long time and there was an owl in the car that kept defecating <laughs> <laughs> pretty regularly. Um, but it was, apart from that, it was, it was great. Um, and yeah, I've got some good memories. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, so 
So my question is kind of similar. Uh, which movie did you like the most to shoot and why? I'll say my, the first one. I also, I had a first one too. No, I didn't like standing around watching people. I remember doing that last scene in the courtyard. It was days and days of watching Rafe being brilliant as Voldemort, but doing a monologue. And we're like, there were a lot of actors around looking around, like, she's got an Oscar, he's got an Oscar, and we're all standing there. We bought a ticket to the Ray Fine show. You know? <laughs> so I liked it when I had more to do than the Chamber of Secrets. Yeah, I mean, the first one for me as well, it was just, just suddenly walking into the books, and it was just, as I say, it was just so exciting for me. And um, yeah, I'll never forget that first time I walked into the Great Hall as well, and it was all lit. Um, and just all the people, it, it was, yeah, it was. Such a, a spectacle. Uh, you get used to it after a while. When you first go there, you just right. it just it takes your breath away. Yeah, it's true. <coughs> Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, first of all, thank you for my very nice uh, childhood. Um, and then, uh, Rupert. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rupert, um, how was it to uh, destroy the Slytherin Horcrux and speak uh, Puzzle? Uh, did you break your thumb? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jason, how was it to um, act a uh, Death Eater and uh, to wear the dark mark? Oh, I just like the wig. I mean, I wear anything. It makes me look. The, the honest truth is that I was so nervous about being in the films because Alan Rickman was already in them playing Snake, playing Sinister, that I invented as many things to protect me as I could. I had a wig, I had capes, I had a cane. I would have had a stutter and a parrot if they let me. <laughs> <laughs> and a wooden leg. I just wanted as many things as I could to try and even begin to be sinister sharing a film with Alan Rickman. So I loved every every prop they gave me. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I kind of remember the, the parcel time was quite tricky. And obviously Dan, <laughs> he speaks fluent. He's, he's very good at parcel timing because it's a real kind of... I couldn't even do it now, but it's, it's, it's very uh, kind of lispy. <laughs> um, but it was yeah, it's fun. It was really, it was really fun. I, I, I really enjoyed um, those last two movies. Were were, were were kind of really on a different tone, and, they, and it was great. Well, the first Deathly Hallows was basically just you, Dan, and Emma going camping. Yeah, of course. You just went on a long, long camping holiday. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No um, pressure, you're the last question of the entire you. session. <laughs> it all rests on you to bring it to a really exciting climax. Good luck. Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> so, uh, I have two questions, one for each of you. Um, my question for Rupert is, um, Tom Fett mentioned in his book, Beyond the Wand, that you had an ice cream truck and llamas, firstly two and then 16. Do you still have them, and if not, what happened to them? Yeah, I still have it. Yeah, I I learned to drive in it. It was my first, it was my first car. It was something I always wanted. Um, I quickly found out that driving an ice cream van around with no ice cream in it was probably a little bit creepy. <laughs> um, but I still love the van, and, I, and, I, and as I said, I said, I took it on the last day of filming. I took it to set with ice cream. With ice cream. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I still have it. Yeah, I still have it. I don't. I don't drive it a lot, but um, it's a beautiful van. It's, it's for Wednesday when you get 17. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's a great van. Yes. And your question for Jason. Okay. Uh, first, Becky Rupert. Rupert. <laughs> um, and my question for you, Jason. Uh, could you imagine to play the character Jason Brody for more episodes in case histories? Because my oh. and my mom's opinion is that the show is very great. Uh, well, God bless your mum for her exquisite taste. Uh, uh, thanks for bringing up a show that literally nobody else in the entire room has seen. I did a British detective series called Case Histories. Jackson Brody is a brilliantly written character. The books are amazing. Kate Atkinson is a magnificent novelist, just like Joe who wrote Harry Potter. Um, the, the characters are so rich and complex on the page. and. Uh, we ran out of books, so we stopped making the TV series and we made up some of our own stories. And they weren't very good. She's written another book now, so we'll see if someone comes to me. But, uh, uh, but thank you for ending it on a nice damp note. Uh, no, no, <laughs> thank you very much for asking and thank your mum. And thank, thank you. you all very much. You, know, you were going to bring it to a close, but uh, it's been a real joy being... Uh, I haven't done a convention for three years, so I haven't been to any. I was nervous about being out in crowds and it's been so lovely meeting everybody. So thank you so much for being so kind. It's been